Today on Code Dependent, we're going to talk about Pixel Bender. So Pixel Bender is a technology out of Adobe Labs, came out a few months ago. You can go grab it if you want. Google Pixel Bender, you'll end up on Adobe Labs site and you can download the toolkit, which looks a little bit like this. Uh, Pixel Bender shaders are little programs that you write that operate on every pixel of an output image and basically take an arbitrary number of input image parameters, each of which produces pixels that you operate on, or scalar parameters, or other calculations and numbers that you want to deal with to basically calculate that final pixel value. And you can get some amazing effects out there. I'm not going to talk about the amazing effects today. I'm going to talk about how you can do really simple things with Pixel Bender shaders and the new effects that we have in Flex 4. So this is Pixel Bender Toolkit. This is a very simple shader uh, that is shipped with the toolkit itself called Crossfade, and it crossfades between two images. So I've loaded in two images, and as you drag the slider back and forth, you're changing this parameter called intensity, and that uh, fades between the two images, or crossfades between the two images, fades one out and fades the other in. Why you would want to crossfade between Mandelbrot and the Canyon Lands, I'm not sure. I think it looks awful. Um, but there are other images that you might actually want to do crossfades between and other situations where crossfade would be a very powerful uh, transition effect. So we can take a very quick look at the shader. I really don't want to go into details about how to write these things, um, so please check out the toolkit itself. But in the meantime, let's take a look at a little bit of code. We have one input that's the front image, another input that's the back image, and then we have dest, which is the output from this shader. That's going to be the actual image that's produced that you see uh, that's crossfaded in the end. And then we have the front pixel that we grab um, in the code from that front image, the back pixel that we grab from the back image, and then we call this internal function mix that actually does the crossfade calculation between them. So that's the standard shader. Um, we want to build it for Flash. We go up to the file menu and we say export filter for Flash player, and then it produces this, this file uh, called a PBJ file. And then we put that PBJ file into our Flex project and embed the source for that, Im sorry, embed the binary for that, um, the shader code, and all of a sudden we've got a new flash filter. So flash filters are very powerful things, right? You can change the way objects are displayed and give them uh, really interesting, um, simplistic, and yet under the hood, very complex uh, uh, image characteristics to change the way they're displayed. You can give them drop shadows, you can give them glows, you can give them blurs. You can do very simple things to these objects um, and radically change the way they're displayed on the screen. But the limitation was that you couldn't provide your own filters. The bitmap filter superclass of all the flash filters was a final class, or you, you couldn't really extend it. All the details of how filters were worked were embedded in the can set of filters provided by Flash Player. Well, now using Pixel Bender, you can actually get custom filter effects. So they have a new shader filter, just like they had glow filter, blur filter, drop shadow filter. Now there's a shader filter, and you can basically load in an arbitrary PBJ file from Pixel Bender, and then do whatever you want in that shader and apply that filter as the, the final bitmap image of your target object and change the way it's displayed. So that's shader filters in general. What we're talking about today is how to animate them over time. So we have this simple effect, simple application called animated crossfade. When I click on this image, the photographs were done by a friend of mine, Roland Guy. I should give him credit here. He takes pretty pictures. So we can crossfade between these two pictures. We've got the Golden Gate and we've got a harbor. As I click on the image, we crossfade to the next image. So what's actually going on in the code? So if we go up to the top, we can see, OK, we embed the image there. We embed the harbor image there. On creation complete, we actually grab the bitmap data. These are going to be supplied to the um, shader itself. And in the click handler, so let's actually take a look at some of the markup down here. So we have a declaration section where we declare all the non-visual components in our markup in Flex4. We have a shader filter. This is the new thing, uh, the new filter supplied by uh, the Flash player. And we've given it an ID of crossfade filter, and we've said, OK, the shader for this thing, the actual PBJ file, is going to be embedded from this crossfade.pbj. The important thing to notice here is that that was just a standard pixel bender shader. I didn't do any customization of that thing. All I did was compile it for the flash filter and then put it in my project. Right? And then we say, OK, I also want an animate filter effect. Now, we saw animate filter being used in a previous show to animate the properties of a standard 
flash filter, a, a glow filter, as we animated the alpha on it. Uh, well, here we're doing exactly the same thing. It just ha so happens that the filter we're animating is this shader filter instead, which gives us much more customization than we can get with the standard uh, flash player filters. So we have an ID of crossfader. We're going to target um, the image itself, and we're going to use our crossfade filter as a bitmap filter that we're going to vary the properties on. And then when the effect ends, we want to call our end handler, because what we want to do is run a shader that crossfades between these two images, and then when that shader is done animating, we want to actually swap out the image that's being used in our image uh, control. Um, and then inside the animate filter, we have a simple motion path that says, OK, I'm going to vary the intensity property. If you'll remember from Pixel Bender Toolkit, that's the property that we were varying as we dragged the slider back and forth. So I want to vary the intensity property, and I want it to go from 0 to 1 over time. So that's going to crossfade it um, from an intensity value of 0, intensity value of 1, and that modulates how much of each image is displayed at any point during the animation. We have our image control declared here. Um, the source initially is going to be the golden gate image, but that's going to change over time. And when someone clicks on the image, we call our click handler. So we go back up, check out the click handler, and it says, OK, if the current image source is golden gate, then I'm going to set a temporary variable, new image source, and that's what's going to be used later to actually swap in the harbor image. And I'm going to set some properties on our shader uh, to be these two images, BD0 and BD1. Um, otherwise, if we're using the other image, then we simply set the variables differently. And then we set the front image and back image properties. These are the input image uh, parameters that we saw in Pixel Bender Toolkit. Um, to BD0 and BD1 that we set above, and then we play the effect. So we've set up the shader, we've plugged the shader into the animate filter effect, and we play the animate filter effect to vary the intensity between 0 and 1 over time, and then each of those pixels is calculated dynamically by the Flash Player uh, using Pixel Bender Toolkit technology. So that's how we use both Pixel Bender for doing arbitrary and very powerful shader stuff inside of Flash Player as well as Flex, and how we use the new animate filter in Flex 4 effects to animate the properties on these arbitrary objects to get powerful transition effects as you go from screen to screen in your application. If you want to see the source code for this application, as well as other related applications, check out my blog at graphics-geek.blogspot.com.